You're looking different. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my mustache, maybe. <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Uh, thank you very much for coming to the show for uh, to this uh, COVID nineteen special program. Thanks for having me. Uh, first of all, how are you? How are you coping with the COVID nineteen pandemic? You, you're coaching, right? No. Yes, yes. I'm. Uh, the, the pandemic has been uh, challenging for for many people, but luckily uh, our, for for myself and my family, we've uh, been able to stay healthy and properly social distancing. Um, so here in BC, we've had our cases a bit more under control, and we've actually taken the extra time to get outside and get, enjoy what this beautiful province has to offer. Um, and then also reassessing kind of my career, my choices mm -hmm. uh, beyond skating, because a lot of my skating tours, my skating shows got canceled uh, in April and May. So uh, I had to really start thinking about, okay, if, if I can't do shows anymore, I really have to start planning for the future and planning for uh, what else I'm going to do beyond uh, Patrick the performer. So uh, I've, I've, yes, done some coaching, online coaching uh, early on in the pandemic. I did a lot of online Zoom classes. Um, and then now we're getting back to the rink. So I'm doing some coaching at the ice rink. Um, I'm also studying, uh, trying to get uh, past my national level certification for coaching. Coaching. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then also my uh, real estate license, uh, trying to keep wow. the mind, <laughs> trying to keep my mind uh, busy and, and study and uh, nurture the, the mind, especially right now when we're spending so much time at home. Mm -hmm. uh, when you retired, you said uh, 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 figure skating is a journey. It's just uh, this period before you, because you are still very young. So uh, when you think about the future right now, what's your plan? And then what's the goal? Well, I think the goal is always to, um, is to stay present in the journey, uh, like mm -hmm. you mentioned. <laughs> I think it's um, sometimes I, I find, especially during my career, I was planning always four years, every four years, every Olympic Games was the plan and that was the goal and everything else uh, was planned around that. But now uh, I kind of want to do the opposite. I don't want to plan. And I, mm -hmm. uh, yes, there's a plan, but maybe shorter uh, shorter, how mm -hmm. do I say, like shorter term, short term. Uh, goals, <laughs> short term, short term, short term <laughs> goals, exactly. So yeah. I, I look at more of, um, you know, one thing at a time with getting my coaching courses and the real estate. Um, and, and, and once I get those, then, then we look forward into the next chapter and the next opportunity, because I think when we're getting so far ahead, uh, that creates a lot of anxiety. And especially right now with the pandemic and spending a lot of time at home and a lot of alone time, um, they're, they're, it's important to, to be mentally healthy and mentally aware of uh, your, your process, your thought process. Um, so, and staying positive. So I've uh, always, I've really taken to heart the, the idea of balancing work and life and, mm -hmm. Uh, especially here in BC, we get uh, we have s s so many opportunities to get outside and explore the explore nature. Yeah, around nature. Us. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I've been trying to balance both getting uh, learning and working, and also getting outside and and enjoying. Yeah. True. Uh, recently, you joined some Asian Canadian celebrities wearing masks and then delivering the message of anti-racism, mm -hmm. uh, especially racism against the Asian Chinese during the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to lend your voice? How important is it to you? Yeah, it, it, it's very important to me because as a Chinese Canadian, both my parents are immigrated to Canada um, from China. Uh, and Hong Kong. So for me, it's, it's extremely important because that's my heritage and um, the Chinese community has helped me so much through my own career and they played such a big role in my success and my, my, they, they made it possible for me to realize my dreams. Um, so with that in mind and my career and the success I have, I've had in my career and I've, I have a bit of, um, uh, I think I'm, I'm well known in Canadian sports. Uh, I think it's my, my duty and my responsibility to talk about it and um, bring to light some of the issues that are happening 
uh, around the world and even in Canada, unfortunately, um, some of the attacks to towards the, the Chinese community, the Asian community. Um, so that's been that's been my my motivation is to to make, to bring light to it and help use my my platform to help this cause. The past few months uh, since the pandemic has started, um, there's been this dialogue of. Uh, that that this virus has come has come from China and um, it, it's because of Chinese people that this disease exists um, and they're the reason for this pandemic um, and unfortunately the reaction has been uh, sometimes negative uh, in, in Vancouver we've had um, some monuments uh, some deface, defacing of, of monu monuments vandalism um, storefronts being vandalized here in Vancouver in the Chinese in Chinatown and in, in downtown Vancouver um, and like I mentioned the the older gentleman who was uh, assaulted outside a, a, a convenience store I think it's so it's so shocking because I, I feel like in Canada I felt as a as a elite athlete representing Canada internationally I felt proud of the fact that Canada um, stands up for equality and stands up for uh, the safety of, of everyone, no matter your skin color, no matter your, your history, your heritage. Um, so to see that, I, I think, I, I feel like we, we as Canadians have a need to do better. Um, there, there, there can't be these types of um, events and tragic events that um, hurt people. And uh, we're better than that in Canada. We're better than that as Canadians. So I think there's more important things to be um, to be focused on than than yeah, hatred. Than, the, yeah, than, than hatred. Hate. They were blaming certain or, yeah, group of yeah, people. Yeah, we can't be using our energy to to hate, for hate. We need to be um, really embracing um, our our duty as a Canadian, as Canadian citizens to, to work together, um, mm. to stay healthy and, and, and get through this storm of this, this tragic uh, pandemic. True. You think you will continue doing this? You will com continue work with the CCNC or other uh, organizations to promote this? For sure. I, I, I will, I will lend, I, I want to lend my voice and my, uh, the little influence I have <laughs> um, to, 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 talk about it and mm -hmm. have the discussion. I, I, I think, uh, I don't think attacking or, or um, getting mad at, at, at people who um, have, have done some horrible things. I don't think that's the right direction. I think we need to just make everybody feel welcome to voice their opinion. And mm -hmm. then we educate and then educating everybody of uh, the challenges that, or the, the hardships of, of racism and, um, and why it's it's it still exists in, in Canada. Um, I've recently been part. I've joined a, a work group in uh, in Skate Canada, uh, mm -hmm. which is our, our Canadian uh, federation, figure skating federation. We've created a diversity and inclusion uh, work group um, to hopefully begin um, reviewing policies um, and making changes to the policies uh, to to promote equality, um, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, of course, there's still, even within Skate Canada, there's sometimes, uh, I think, first and foremost, we need to begin by educating ourselves. I need to educate myself. I'm not an expert. I'm just starting to grasp um, the issues at hand and how do we tackle those issues? Um, I'm not the expert. Uh, there's many, many people out there who have the experience and I look f and I'm, I'm doing my part by listening to them and giving, um, giving the black community, the indigenous community a voice um, because that's what's important right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you grew up in Canada and you were a very successful athlete. Have you ever personally experienced racism during your career? <laughs> if <It's>, any. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, sometimes racism is, isn't obvious. It's not a, it doesn't stand out. Um, and, and sometimes it takes time to reflect and look back into my memories and remember these moments where um, there, there was never direct 
um, I never experienced direct racism um, personally, um, but it's more of this, the way the environment I was in, there was, uh, I think, for example, uh, when I grew up, um, I looked up to Brian Orser, I looked up to Kurt Browning, I looked up to Elvis Stoiko, all of them are Caucasian <laughs> males. And there, there, was, there was never really a Chinese Canadian, a Canadian who looked Chinese or Asian, of Asian descent, who was at the top of Canada, representing Canada on the international stage. Um, I never had that to, to look up to. Luckily now, sk I believe skating has made big steps forward in terms of having more of an Asian presence in the sport. I think that has, you see that now, some of the top skaters, we have many, many top skaters who are um, of Asian descent. Um, so I, I, I like to feel like I played a, a small part of that. Um, and I like to think... <laughs> You're very that, humble. <laughs> I, I think that uh, there is change happening. Um, mm. So I never experienced a, a traumatic event, uh, but there's, there was moments in my life, as, especially when I was younger, uh, you know, early teens, where I felt like I almost had to um, subdue my, my, my Chinese heritage. Mm -hmm. um, and become more westernized and more Caucasian uh, to fit in with uh, the rest of my peers in my sport. And can you give me a, some samples, uh, examples? Just... Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, like I mentioned earlier, the, there's uh, when I grew up as a junior skater coming up into the senior ranks, um, I remember going to international competitions in Eastern Europe. And uh, for me, I, I felt always this, I was never forced to feel this way. I was always, it was just the visual mm -hmm. influence, um, the feeling I got from what I watched on TV and then what I saw at competitions person in real, real time. I felt like I needed to almost erase my Chinese um, background or um, I never skated to any kind of, oriental music music yeah uh, mm -hmm. i was always my mom even told me like no i do not want you to skate to chinese music because um i think maybe for fear of um being judged <laughs> for mm -hmm. for skating to um music that 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 my history has 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 created so um yeah, I just felt like basically what I'm trying to say is I, I felt this this sense of um, trying to be more Caucasian. I had to try to be more Caucasian um, in order to be more successful or more or, or less um, um, judged on, on my appearances as opposed to my abilities. Uh, at this moment, during this pandemic, to young Asian, Chinese, Canadian, what is, a, uh, what is your personal message to them? I think don't let uh, first of all don't don't let anyone um, stop you from from uh, realizing your dreams and always remember where you, where you came from and your 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 heritage and because uh, that is your identity at the end of the day that's uh, that's who you are and and for me my Chinese heritage is I look at my parents and I think about all the the sacrifice they made to come to Canada. Um, so we have every right to be um, proud of, of being Chinese and we are proud to be Canadian um, and look at how far uh, you know, your, your dreams can be realized in, in a place like Canada uh, where you know, I was, I'm an example of someone who was lucky enough to have realized my, my biggest dreams. And so uh, don't, lose, don't lose hope and stand up and use your voice use be proud of your identity um, because you're unique and um, don't let anyone else tell you otherwise mm -hmm. thank you thank you very much <laughs> my pleasure